grateful to Gary. It's a real pleasure to serve under you as chair. And I'm grateful, very grateful to my honourable friend, the member for Canterbury, for securing this debate and opening it so, so brilliantly. I'd also like to thank everybody else for their contributions today. I think it's been an excellent debate. The, the devastating conflict in Ethiopia has lasted for two very long years. As my honourable friend stated, some estimates suggest that as many as half a million people have died, including hundreds of thousands of civilians. The ceasefire agreement simply not come, could, could not come quick enough, and Labour is deeply grateful to the diplomats who have worked to secure it. And most of all, that means the African Union and their representatives. Because I think we need to face the reality that the chaos in the Conservative Party over the recent months has weakened the UK's international voice. But now we need to look forward. And I hope the new minister will tell us how the government will deepen the UK's support for African Union mediation, peacekeeping and peacebuilding work over the coming years. East Africa was named as a priority region by this government in their integrated review. We need to understand now how that commitment will be implemented to support peace, security, inclusion and accountability. The first priority, as we know, must be to support humanitarian access for the people of Tigray. In <coughs> August, 89% of the population in Tigray were assessed as food insecure and 29% of children under five and half the pregnant women and breastfeeding women were malnourished. It's inevitable that this situation has worsened further since then. Over the past two years, many people have been descending into deeper desperation in the absence of aid. Surely this in itself has fueled the conflict because if the only way you can eat and survive is by signing up to fight, why wouldn't you do that? And this desperation puts women and children at massively increased risk of abuse and exploitation. So what progress has been made with humanitarian access right now to all parts of Tigray? Because let's face it, demand for assistance is extremely high in many parts of Ethiopia and across the region because of the terrible drought. So are we confident that aid agencies have enough resources to take full advantage to deliver life-saving help quickly? The minister has rightly said to my written questions that the UK stands ready to support the peace process. That's fabulous. So now I'd be grateful to understand how. Can he tell us if discussions are ongoing with the government of Ethiopia and the African Union. And like my honourable friends, I have several constituents who have been agonisingly out of contact with their families in Tigray for many, many months now. Surely we can expect a rapid and final end to communications blackout and the restoration of services. giving way. Like her, I have constituents from Tigray, from Maromia, and from Ethiopia as a whole, and they're going through the most awful stress, um, lack of communication, and they want to send help and aid and support. And does she think we could do a bit more to try to facilitate both information to give the families some sense of security about what's happening to their relatives, but also the community in this country is very keen to send whatever help they can? The, my honourable friend has known me long enough to know that I agree entirely with what he has just said. As my other honourable friends have highlighted, there have been many credible reports of repeated war crimes and potential crimes against humanity. It is surely unacceptable that the UN-mandated Commission of Human Rights experts on Ethiopia have been so heavily restricted in its work. Despite those restrictions, the Commission has set out damning evidence of horrifying abuses by all parties to the conflict. Because of the lack of access for journalists and human rights defenders, the violations we know about may well only be the tip of the iceberg. So it would be good to know how we are preparing for the Preventing Sexual Violence in Conflict conference in just two weeks' time. Because there have been so many reports of women, children and men being subject to horrific sexual violence, including repeated rape and torture. 
Many seem to have been targeted based on their identity using sexual violence as a weapon of war. So I'm hoping that the Minister will be able to tell us how the UK is working to support survivors through access to specialist services, including mental and physical health support and access to justice. Many of the survivors who have been displaced will not be currently safe to return to their homes. And many are in camps in Sudan as well as across Ethiopia. And I'm sure we will all understand that specialist support needs to get to them where they are now and quickly. But I genuinely struggle to see how the enormous divisions in Ethiopia will mend without proper accountability. And this is about security as well as justice for the victims. I'm struggling to understand how we can have confidence in a sustainable peace if there isn't healing and inclusion in Ethiopia. So I'm hoping the minister will tell us more about the approach he will take to support credible accountability for the countless victims of abuses in this war. And I want to ask the minister about some of the potential pitfalls because it would be devastating to the people of Ethiopia and damaging to UK interests if this agreement fails. So first, the, the agreement excludes Eritrea and it isn't clear how the rapid withdrawal of all Eritrean forces will be ensured. The government has failed to mirror previous US sanctions against Eritrean entities involved in the conflict. So I'm hoping the minister will consider that as a lever that he might have to deploy. Next, we know that there are significant border disputes, particularly around Western Tigray. Many of the systematic alleged abuses included ethnic Cleansing relate to this area. So a pathway will need to resolve these disputes fairly and peacefully. The ceasefire does not end the need for close and consistent engagement from the UK. Far from it. Let's be clear. The UK has much to gain from a just peace. Ethiopia has made an enormous contribution to sustainable development and to the pan-African vision and its institution. The peoples of Ethiopia is the, the potential of the people of in Ethiopia is even greater than their history. And I believe that our partnership and collaboration can be much stronger if the UK supports the peace to hold and if justice is done and seen to be done for the peoples of that very great country.